Hey, what's up you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider, and welcome back to Roger Williams Park Zoo. I am joined as, uh, not always, but same as last time, with Leaf. Hey Good guys, old. how are we doing? Good old buddy. for some monkeys. Yeah, so this episode <laughs> has been, uh, you might be like, oh Nick, like, didn't you like record this live stream months ago? And, like, we all saw it. We all saw the live stream. It's still on YouTube and stuff. You definitely saw me building this habitat and stuff. Why did it take so long for Roger Williams to return? Well, which, by the way, this is just a running joke at this point. That every time I'm like, Roger Williams is going to come back faster. Episodes are going to... Every single time. I do this for Mystic, too. It'll be like, yep, we should be... We're good to go. We're going to be faster. And then it's just a, an inevitable delay. But I'm going to hold myself. So I'm holding myself accountable. I'm doing weekly Roger Williams episode, episodes now. I don't know when I'm going to upload them. I guess Wednesdays would be for the alliteration. Like, Roger Williams Wednesdays or something. But, uh, I, I don't know, this is gonna go up on a Monday, so <laughs> I don't even know. But, um, I, I'm gonna hold myself to that. Because we need to finish this series. Because Roger Williams has been, it's, it's been a long time since it started. And so, I am, I am fully ready for it to just be over. And, and it's, so, like, so close to being done, too. Exactly. Like we just have a few more finishing touches. Like, you probably just saw me log on right now. I'm going to go finish, like all the other habitats that I need to finish, like the alligator and stuff like that. I just yep. want this to be done. Exactly, because, like, there... In the past, I've had a lot of issues with mods and stuff, and that and that's why this episode took a while. Um, is normally the modded animals that I have in this series were the thing that really threw me for a while. So, as an example, with this episode, the biggest issue were the monkey species. So... For anyone who um, has seen my live streams and stuff, they know that I made in the past the Howler Monkey and the Saki Monkeys. And all I had to do was work on the TT Monkeys. Now I had other people saying they were working on them, and then I just never got them. So I was like, okay, whatever, you know, I, I won't worry about it, I'll just make them my, uh, myself. Then, just periodically, we just had mo monkey mods break, we've gone through, I think, it might have been two updates. I think it just might have been the perfect storm that it was, like, between, like, we were midway through updating 1.5 tools or something, and obviously 1.6 just dropped, that the monkey mods just kept breaking and stuff. So, I was like, listen, I've made this Saki monkey now four times myself. If anyone wants to do this for me, please, just, I want to get this episode done. So, Leaf did uh, me the great deal, and I'm glad I have you here because I can credit you directly, so thank you. Because okay. Leaf actually made the new species versions of the Howler Monkey and the TT Monkey. So, I, I thank you for that. That's really useful. They are up to date, so you can definitely download them right now. And uh, that's awesome. So, I, I want to thank you for that. But I also want to thank Mark, who... Mark, he hasn't uploaded officially as of right now. But he gave me early access to it. He is working on the Saki Monkey. It looks great. Um, I made a couple of slight tweaks or whatever just so that it looked better with the fur and stuff. But other otherwise, it's all all credit goes to Mark. Um, so thank you to him. Um, I'll have a link to his Nexus um, in the description and stuff. But uh, yeah, so with, uh, thanks to you guys, I was able to get this episode out because otherwise it would have been forever. But uh, speaking of mods, I can actually kind of talk about this a little bit. So, um, in addition to the monkeys in this episode, we also are working on the green anaconda habitat. So, I had one of two options for this. So, I could have done what I did for the emerald tree boa, which was basically make an exhibit animal and just, you know, re-skin the yellow anaconda. But I was like, you know, that doesn't really... It, it wouldn't feel right with the space and stuff to just have this clear box that's going to be a 4 meter by 4 meter. So instead, I wanted to do a custom tank. So what I did was I basically made a custom habitat, and then I exported the yellow anaconda model, and then made my own green anaconda prop. So it's actually a prop mod, but it arguably, everyone seems to agree, it's kind of better than exhibit animals. Because yeah. even though they don't really move, as you can see, they look just as good. Um, because the exhibit animals, frankly, don't move much either, but you get a lot more customization and stuff. And, like, one of the only things that, like, actually, there's many things wrong with exhibits, but 
you just can't customize the interior of interior of them. And with like all the habitat customization that you can do and everything else, the exhibits are just so lackluster compared to like everything else. And that's what I love about like these new like smaller animal mods that mm. you've been coming out with. I know you did like the sloth back in the day. Um, you're doing all the birds right now. Yep. It's like insane the possibilities that you have with those in a game that's like, you know, very liberal when it comes to the customization you can do. And then with exhibits, it's just like, no, you, you can't really, you can place a, you can place like a few logs, a tree, maybe even some like heaters or stuff. But besides that, there is nothing else you can do. And that's what I really do love about these mods in particular. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I'm definitely in the same boat. And I will say, I wish that at the time of recording this, I had my brand new mod that just came out, the Exhibits mod, where I could use some of those Exhibit pieces to build the habitats. Because, as you can see here, I'm kind of struggling because there's not that many small foliage or anything in the game currently, so I had to kind of get creative a little bit with, like, placing down some... I think uh, the... Like, I just started using, like, some of the palm tree tops and stuff to, like, add just a little bit of detail and some ivy and stuff on the walls. And I actually don't think it came out that bad overall. But, um, yeah, definitely, like, I would have appreciated those newer logs. Which is funny, like I said, this episode it was recorded a while ago. So long ago that by this point, um, we have official chain link in the game and stuff, too. So, like, you might see later on in the video... I work on the uh, outdoor exhibit for the monkeys, and they have, spoiler alert, a chain link roof. And it's funny how, like, in modern day, um, I could just have a much easier time than what I ended up actually doing. Now, but, was this before Southeast Asia? Um, you know, it might be. I think yeah. it might have actually been before Southeast Asia, because I'm not totally sure... The, the timeline kind of gets a little bit blurry because, like, I've been holding on to this footage and stuff for a while. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's a Hyacinth Pakal mod, oh that, but that's the old version of it. So, it, actually, right now, you can download the uh, Hyacinth Pakal mod as well. So, that'll also be in the description. So, as you can see, this episode, the reason it was, uh, you know, so difficult was because it was so mod-intensive. So, mm -hmm. I had to do the Macaw mod, the Anaconda mod, and three monkeys. And... That's not, you know, the easiest thing to do, um, obviously for one person. But actually, another thing that I can mention is uh, probably in the next episode, I have the red-footed tortoise now as well that I can throw in here. So, I, originally I wasn't even planning on doing the red-footed tortoise in where faces. Are, where so, are the red-footed tortoises even found in faces? So, they're kind of in the pit area in the center. Um, they have a couple of red-footed tortoises with some of the, like, ducks and stuff. All right. Um, so they're kind of close. They're um, in this small area immediately across from the giant otters. So where the giant otter tank is, they basically, if you just look down into the pit, there's a little bit of a flat, sandy area where there's some uh, red-footed tortoises. So that's um, cool. I, n I like never notice them because I can never like. That's one of my biggest problems with faces. If you look down there, it, you don't really have an incentive to look down there. I'm gonna be completely. Yeah, well, just because, like, a lot of the big animals, you are thinking they're either in... I mean, obviously, the big animals are in the, the three individual cages. The monkeys, the otters, and the um, tamandua slash agouti slash toucan habitat. Um, and, yeah, like, some of the other animals, they... Because there are quite a bit of animals. A lot of people don't realize that there's... Uh, I've had people comment, they don't even know there's free-roaming animals at all. Like, they don't even wow. notice that the tamarins, for instance... Which is funny, because, like, obviously the tamarins are probably my favorite thing about faces. You get to see, like, these little oranges, like, running around. Um, and they, like, the, the tamarins get everywhere. They climb on, on the, the chain link, on the, the mesh, on the glass. Like, they, they're kind of insane. But, um, yeah, so, like, it's kind of funny how, yeah, people don't know about some of the ducks or some of the um, other things that are all over faces, frankly. Um, the sloth, a lot of people, like, know it's supposed to be there. They don't realize it's in a, a small little basket right at the front, um, usually. Uh, just because it, it just kind of blends into the rest of the environment, because it's just... It's not a very active sloth. Well, obviously sloths aren't very active to begin with, but, like, I... Even when we went to Cape... Uh, not Cape Rim, but, uh, Southwick's the other day, mm -hmm. that sloth was active, that sloth was moving. Yeah, that's But, like, true. I've never seen the Roger Williams sloth move And at there's all. three! Like, that's the thing, is, like, Roger... What? Yeah, well, because we just had... We had, uh, Baby Beanie, which is... Uh-huh. 
Uh, and then, yeah, the, I, I forget the mother and father's names, but yeah. Um, the father is usually kept off exhibit, I think. I think he, oh, that makes sense. I yeah. think he might be... I don't think he's an ambassador animal, but I think they just keep him in the behind-the-scenes faces area. But the mother is usually out as well. But they, I, I'm pretty sure uh, the mother and Beanie just hang out in the basket together, and it just looks like there's a clump of matted fur. <laughs> like, so it's kind of funny. Um... Which, by the way, as you can see, I, I tried to accurately recreate the um, the faux tree in the center of the habitat. So, as you can see, I'm, I'm definitely trying to add as much detail to it as possible, but obviously I have some limitations because it's Planet Zoo. Mm -hmm. um, I had to get creative. Like, some of the branches don't look that good. Um, but I, I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit, you know, less harsh on myself about some of the imperfections because obviously i don't have every piece i would ever need for planet zoo but yeah actually okay here's another thing i know for a fact that this was recorded before billboards because i remember i have to make the murals on the walls of this building and i feel like i would have um if, if billboards were out by now i would have just done them that way 100 percent yeah so yeah that actually makes so this is pretty old footage actually but like i said i i'm like 95 percent sure unless the only hiccups i could see from the remainder of this series is um jen uh, amazing mod creator that a lot of you know and stuff um uh, jen works with leaf and i all the time on mods she has already made the uh, tamandua so i believe is that updated for 1.6 yeah it is okay so if that's updated so then the tamandua should be good um the toucan shouldn't be an issue because I've already done the parrots and stuff so toucan shouldn't be di difficult mm -hmm. and the agouti is it's we, in progress we, we, it's we in did progress. do I it I have it coded yeah. and I know we had it working in 1.5 so that just has to yeah. be updated but I feel confident we have you know a few weeks we could probably get because next episode should be easy because the next episode just red-footed tortoise and giant otters and cool that's you know that's already in the game no issue um and then finally i'll do one last faces episode we'll round out face of the rainforest then um we could probably check in on the progress you did for um Elsa's new habitat with the alligator. I think that's yeah. A, I'm looking at it right now. It's like almost. I just need to do like the little bayou theming around to yep. so get that done. Well, yes, yeah, so that's we'll be good. ready to rock and roll. And then and we also have like all the billboards and stuff to put up through the zoo. True, I know we yeah. Kind of started on that, but it's, that is that true. Yeah. Might be its own episode. I'm gonna be. Honest. Yeah, I think <laughs> I I because I'm thinking of doing maybe. Um, just in I'll have to see, obviously. I like how this is a very meta episode discussing how the series is going to go. Um, but I'm thinking what I might do is I might add another special episode that's basically just kind of updating the front of the zoo. Because since the last time we've talked, uh, people have maybe seen some of my real-life Roger Williams vlogs that I've started doing. We've had a lot of updates to the zoo. Frankly, updates that um, frankly make my job a little bit easier. Um... So as an example, I remember for the longest time, the reason the dromedary camel took so long was because uh, the dromedary camel mod was breaking. Now we have Bactrian camels at the zoo instead, so that's kind of negated. Similarly, the Audad, similar thing, very difficult habitat, but now it's seemingly going to be- there are there is still our one Audad left, but it seems like they're kind of phasing it out to where it's just going to be a standalone ostrich exhibit now. So I kind of wanted to make a few tweaks and stuff, and then obviously, like I said, the zoo has come a long way, or the, the planet zoo has come a long way since I started this series at the beginning of the game. So there's a lot of things that need to be touched up, i.e. what I'm working on right now, like the chain link. Yeah. I have to fix all the chain link to use the new pieces. Some of the signage isn't totally up to date anymore. Like some of the stuff like is, is hilarious, like looking at um, the front of the zoo, how outdated it is. So I want to update those. Um, and then, yeah, so like there's just a lot of stuff that I want to work in to try to make the zoo as nice as possible for when I eventually put it up on the workshop for everyone. Because uh, that is still the plan, so um, I, I will be, because I guess that's kind of the thing, is I'm going to try to avoid modded scenery that's too intensive, so um, obviously like modded scenery for like, I, I could do stuff like, oh, uh, the safari pack and add like, uh, I, I have li the little bird decals that are on like the, the zebra and cheetah, or uh, the cheetah enclosure and stuff, and moon 
the bedroom stuff. And I could add those, but I feel like that would be, you know, a little bit, you know, weird because I'd have to delete all those. And it's easier just having the implied versions right now that are just like little 2D pieces. So I'd be cool with that. Um, but I do think, like, obviously, you know, if you want, you can get the full experience by downloading the, the Parrot mod and the, the Anaconda and Sloth and stuff. Because they seem to be really the only implied um, modded stuff right now. But I also am updating birds, so we're probably going to go back eventually and uh, update World of Adaptations to add... Uh, I have a Jamba Fruit Dove and Kookaburra uh, model and stuff that I want to add oh, in. I forgot about those. Yeah. So, like I said, there's just a lot of little things like that that I want to just kind of touch up just to make the, the, the zoo as, as good looking as possible. Which um, I want to shout out. Roger Williams directly has uh, seen the series now. <laughs> so um, on the last video, they actually commented and said, "Like, hey, by the way, we're loving your series. Um, you know, keep in touch or whatever." Um, uh, my guess is they probably wouldn't want to. I'm I'm gonna even speak probably for them. I would say if they're gonna highlight it or whatever in some sort of like in Wild Magazine, the the newsletter that we get every month as members mm -hmm. of the zoo. If they highlight it in something like that, I'd kind of like it if they if we just wait until the series is over at this point. Because I feel like it'd just be weird if it's like highlighted with a handful of episodes left. It's It'd be better if it's just like, hey, listen, here's the whole zoo, here's the full walkthrough, whatever. Um, that'd be a lot better, in my opinion, so... I am definitely interested in, uh, you know, them checking out officially and stuff. I mean, I'd, I'd love to, like, you know meet any of the uh, actual like you know keepers or um even the higher up management i don't know if i'm gonna Ooh. jeremy goodman <laughs> meet the meet the the zoo director himself um or that, even some like backstage access maybe you could that'd be cool yeah it's so, like hey we we need to uh, do some backstage elements i do want to redo the elephant house if people want to let me do the elephant like because I, I just want, like, even if I didn't get, like, access to the, like, you know, we can't do that. We can't let you into the elephant house officially or whatever. If I could just get some sort of, like, photos or something, that'd be awesome. Like, just of what the interior of the, the stables and stuff looks like, I'd, I'd be fine with that. Um, so that'd be cool. But, uh, I, I love this. I love how much I struggled with this, uh, lattice piece. Because this is the old way of doing oh, chain... This God. was... Okay, I should say this is one of the many ways of doing chain link prior to 1.6. So, <laughs> as, yeah, it's just, so, like, me struggling so much. You know, it's very similar, though. Like, it's, it's not really that different from how the current chain link works. Because I feel like since... It, the lattice piece is also a square. I'm gonna have similar issues, like where it might be intersecting and stuff at certain areas, just because of how how the chain link is positioned. So I'm kind of interested in how that's gonna look and differ from this. Obviously, it'll look better, but yeah, I'm I'm very interested in how that looks. Um, I guess we could probably talk about the actual monkeys. So, uh, so I don't know how much you know about monkeys. <laughs> I know that I made the sizes completely wrong for all of them, so that shows how much I know about my monkeys. That is true, you did kind of butcher the size. I, I kind of critiqued him about that, I was like, the TT monkeys you made are like larger than the Howler monkeys, which is <laughs> wildly off, because TT monkeys are very, very tiny little monkeys. They're not Tamarin size small, but they're small uh, monkeys overall. Um, and like, compared to like the howler monkeys, like, howler monkeys are huge. Howler monkeys are like, the size of like, dogs almost. <laughs> like, oh, small dogs, not like a golden retriever, but like, yeah. maybe like a pug or something, like a pug or a beagle or something. They're pretty big monkeys. Um, and so it's, it was just funny watching, <laughs> like, these three types of monkeys that look great. I think you did a really good job at doing the howler monkey and the TT monkey. I, I like the TT monkey more. Howler monkeys, I don't really blame you if there's, like, any inaccuracies, just because, like, they're kind of a really weird monkey, like, they are... It's difficult to perfect. Yeah, because, I mean, obviously you can't do, like, the big throat thing. That would have been awesome if, like... Like, if there's one reason I would have wanted an official Howler monkey in the game, it's because they have, like, the cool, like, throat aspect to them. Siamangs kind of have a similar thing, where, like, they have, like, a big echo chamber, chamber so that they can be super loud. Um, obviously they're howler monkeys. Um, so I think that would have been really cool, like, if we could do something like that. But, obviously, you know, you gotta work with what you got. 
the time being, it's not really... I'm sure, like... I, uh, even the last episode, we didn't even have rig editing yet. That's true. That's like, a, like every single episode of Roger Williams just seems to have so many more, like, just... Exp- like, I don't know, like... Uh, evolution in in our uh, modding process so now like yeah we can do rig editing so like animals and stuff. And, and, like another thing is even officially right uh there's another option now where it's like prevent animals from escaping so now my you know petting zoo and stuff doesn't have to have like any crazy weird fencing system or whatever because the the pig and the goats and stuff will just stay where they are and that's kind of nice so I kind of like uh, appreciate that aspect. That's kind of a nice little element to it. But, also, uh, like we, there's been so much that happened like within the last episode. We both went to um, what was a uh, festival of lights or whatever. Oh yeah, the Asian Light Spectacular. This is where uh, this th- this could be a bit controversial. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize, Roger Williams, uh, if you're listening. I did not like the event. <laughs> It was, I mean, it was uh, a bit lackluster for what it was. Only because, so for, I can probably talk about it openly now because the event's over, uh, to my knowledge. So I don't think you can even go to it anymore. Um, yep. So the issue with the event was, if you're a member of the zoo, like Lee for myself, we we have access to the zoo for free. So we obviously paid ahead. Um, we paid the what I think it's like eighty dollars or something, and you get a year membership, so you get unlimited access to the zoo. And the the issue with the Asian Lantern Spectacular is since the lanterns are placed throughout the public areas of the zoo, during the day you can see all of the lanterns for free, but then the actual Lantern Spectacular you're paying even with membership. A pretty hefty amount of money. I want to say like, for Julie and I to go, it's like fifty dollars. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, it was like twenty-five a person, and you didn't really get much out of it. You got to go to the zoo at night, which is awesome. I know you and I are definitely interested in maybe going to the sip and stroll, just because I, I just like going to the zoo after hours. I think it's just cool. Like, uh, it's seeing... it's such a different vibe, to... and I'm very excited for like sip and stroll too because. No kids, like that's yeah, I know that's that's, that's like experience. like I'm not even a huge drinker, but yeah, just for that reason, I'd just be like, cool, like no kids, like mm-hmm. that's definitely a good element of it. And uh, that was the only issue with the Asian Lantern Spectacular is just there were a lot of kids. You got to, they the zoo was open, but it wasn't really you know fully operational, uh, operationable. There was three animals out. It was like the flamingos, the red panda, and the um. That was it, actually. And the eagles. Yeah, and pronghorns. Pronghorns. pronghorns, yeah. You see, you didn't like it, but honestly, I kind of did. It was raining, too, which, like, oh, already well. kind of a bad at zoo experience, but I love the rain. I just love walking around Roger Williams. Just It's pretty nostalgic, you know? And I just had such a great time there. Emily hated it, but I <laughs> loved it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I guess that pretty much wraps up today's episode. So I'm going to have Leaf back for uh, next week's episode. We're going to do the river otters, but or the, the giant otters, sorry. But thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you like Roger Williams. And as always, uh, go subscribe to my buddy Leaf. He deserves the subs. <laughs> so close to 3K, baby. And, yeah, I know. Congratulations once you get there. And then, um, yeah, so past that, uh, the monkeys that are made by Leaf will be in the description. I will have a link to Mark's uh, Nexus as well for when the Saki monkey comes out. My anaconda will be in the description as well as my macaw pack. And past that, let's look at the actual monkeys because the monkeys should be probably being shown any second now. There you go. There's the monkeys. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone. See you guys.